welcome to Plus Sports, the show where we give a different perspective on sports and look at the stories of athletes who amaze and inspire. I'm Patricia bermudez Hezon. Here we will give you not just the latest in the sporting world, but also the stories behind the athletes' struggles, victories, and motivation. We go beyond the stats as we celebrate the great athletic feats with you. With that said, all eyes continue to be on Tokyo Olympics, so we go straight to our take on Tokyo. History continues to be made by our Filipino athletes at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics as we have another athlete who has assured the country of another medal in boxer Carlo Paalam. Carlo Paalam began the Philippines' big day at the Olympics with a resounding victory in the men's flyweight quarterfinals. Paalam defeated Shako Biden Zoyarov of Uzbekistan by a split decision. Paalam was the aggressive fighter from the opening bell and won the first round against Zoyarov, a world champion and an Olympic gold medalist. The bout was stopped in the second round after Zoyarov sustained a cut over his eye after a clash of heads with Paalam leading in most of the scorecards. With the victory, the 23-year-old Paalam will next face Japan's Ryomi Tanaka in the semifinals on Thursday, August 5th for a chance to play in the gold medal match. Then later on, the country's second boxer, Inesti Patesho, went for gold. Patesho fought valiantly against Japan's Sena Airi in the women's featherweight final earlier, but she fell short and took home a silver medal. But even in defeat, Patesho still made history as it is the Philippines' first silver medal in boxing since 1996, third overall, and the first for a Filipina boxer. The 29-year-old Patesho was behind on the scorecards after the first round after a strong start by her foe. But the world champion came out more aggressive in the second round and won the round to set up a thrilling finish in the final round. With Carlo Paalam's victory earlier in the day, the Philippines is assured of three medals in boxing alone and four Olympic medals overall. After Paalam and Patesho, another Filipino athlete tries to secure an Olympic medal later today in EJ Obiana, who will take part in the men's pole vault final. Obiana returns to the Olympic Stadium where he will be up against the best pole vaulters in the world as he tries to secure a podium finish. Obiana is looking to be just the third Filipino to win an Olympic medal in athletics. He qualified for the final after clearing 5.75 meters in his third and final attempt last Saturday, July 31. The 25-year-old who owns a personal best of 5.87 meters will be up against some stiff competition in the finals, including world record holder Armand Plantis of Sweden and Rio Olympics gold medalist Thiago Braz of Brazil. With all the feats our Pinoy athletes achieved today, we are happy we have with us again veteran broadcaster and Tokyo Olympics commentator, Sev Sarmenta, who called the bouts for an international audience. So thanks again, Sev, for joining us. Here's my first question. We all know that the Philippines hasn't won an Olympic medal in boxing since 1996, and now we win three here in Tokyo. How important is the performance of our boxers here at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics? Uh, nagbubunga na yung program ng uh, ABAP. Uh, it has been able to reap uh, dividends from all its investments. Hindi madaling, hindi naman automatic yan. Ano? Uh, pag uh, nag-invest ka sa Buxingero, you invest in coaching, you invest in competition and experience. And now this batch of boxers, itong four na pinadala natin dito, have reaped dividends. Uh, bagamat natalo kanina si Nesty Petesio, silver siya. We are proud of the silver. We're disappointed with the result. Uh, it could have been better, but not with Nesty. Uh, it was a sterling uh, journey for her. Um, Yumir uh, Marshall and is still in the hunt. At kanina nagwagi rin si Carlo Paalam ng isang stunning win against uh, the reigning world champion and a reigning Olympic champion. So, um bumubuo ang loob nitong grupong ito and uh, the things can only get better as we go along as we continue to uh, lend support, give them competition and uh, improve their experience. 
So you talked about the program nagbubunga na nga. This is one of the major reasons why this particular group of boxers were able to break through and win multiple medals for our country. But uh, tell me, what does their performance say about the future of boxing here in the Philippines? We've always had good boxers. Wala namang question yun from the 1930s to the year na Anthony Villanueva almost won a gold medal here in Tokyo in, uh, in 1964. Uh, on to Onyok and uh, the others who won bronze medals. We've always had good boxers. Uh, we had a drought, uh, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, we have not won since Onyok won a silver um, in uh, Atlanta. And uh, the reason for that is that um, we haven't been able to hone the program, get the talents to be able to compete and get good coaching. So, no pumasok naman ng ABAP and uh, things have gone uh, better. Uh, it's no longer the ABAP of old, but it's the new alliances of boxing associations of the, of the Philippines under the leadership of Mr. Pangilinan, Mr. Vargas, and our friend Ed Pixon. Um, there have been challenges. There have been trials. It hasn't been easy. And uh, they've also had tournaments where they have emerged empty-handed. But this Olympics will be unforgettable. We're hoping for the first gold of Philippine boxing. Uh, weightlifting already has that. Uh, a lot of people had hoped that uh, it would come from boxing, but it came from weightlifting. But they'll still take it, and the expectations are still high for boxing. I agree with you on that one. Of course, Nessi Patesho settling for silver. We still have Carlo Paalam and Yumi Marshall who are still in the hunt for that gold medal, as you mentioned. But what are their chances of taking home that top spot in their respective divisions? Carlo Paalam will go up against a Japanese fighter named Tanaka. He is in a good place with his, the confidence won against probably the toughest competition he has had in, uh, he will have. Uh, I think things will look good for Carlo Paalam. I think he will make it to the finals. Uh, Marshall um, has made short work of his opponents. He's, mar he's a marked man. Uh, opponents will look out for him. And if we learned anything from the Petesha fight earlier today, some fighters will take away yung gulang na tinatawag sa boxing. You know? uh, they will take away um, uh, the fighting abilities of the Filipinos. They'll tie them up. Um, they'll do everything that's in the books, legal or otherwise, uh, because I really feel uh, Petesha was taken out of her fight plan and uh, uh, the Japanese, uh, nagulangan na unahan eh, um, hindi rin naka-adjust si Nesti. But I am optimistic that Yumir as well as Carlo will bring home the gold for the Philippines. And we're all looking forward to that. But I wanted to know more about you. Uh, how does it feel to be on the call and to be in Tokyo broadcasting and commentating on these historic matches by our boxers here in the Olympics? When you cover the Philippines, you are um, delightfully, unfortunately, and rightfully biased right away. They say you should not uh, side with anyone. But when you're covering your country, you are inevitably cheering them on. You are disappointed when you don't win. It's never easy. Um, I've been through many of the losses, and it's never easy to go home with those losses. But it's also joyful when there are victories like what Carlo Paalam did, what some of our fighters do, uh, what Manny Pacquiao does. Um, it's a thrill. It's an honor. But it's also a responsibility. You have to call the action as uh, best as you can. But here's the funny part. Nothing prepares you. You can prepare all you want um, in terms of the information, the previous battles, the previous fights, but what you actually say uh, in the moment of victory or in defeat, nothing prepares you for it. You can't write that down in a game story or in a script. It'll all somehow just come from a place known as your heart. And you have a big one, Seb. We really appreciate it. And you really make us so proud. That Thanks again, Seb, for your time. I know you still have events to do commentary on, not just for the Philippines, but for over 20 countries in Asia and the Pacific. 
So thanks again. That was once again our veteran broadcaster from the Philippines reporting from Tokyo, Seb Sarmenta, who was gracious enough to talk to us before he covers his next event. With the Olympics already in day 11, there have been a lot of medals that were handed out in the last day. So it's time we take a look at the latest medal tally. As of 1 p.m., China is still in the driver's seat with 29 gold medals and 63 in total uh, in terms of medals. The United States, meanwhile, is running second with 22 golds and 66 overall host japan is at third place with 18 golds and you can see there are 34 total medals for the host country meanwhile australia retains fourth place with a 14 gold medal haul and 33 total medals so far and then you have the roc at fifth spot with 12 golds and 50 medals in total great britain germany france south korea and new zealand are still in the top 10 of the medal tally but the philippines moves back up Right now at 43rd with Nessie Patesho now officially taking home a silver medal together with Heidelin Diaz's gold medal in weightlifting. But with the likes of Yumir Marshall and Carlo Baalam also guaranteed of Olympic medals, the Philippines isn't done moving up in the rankings. And that is our take on Tokyo. <music> The Olympics is the highest level of competitive sport and the athletes there are constantly trying to outperform one another. The same is the case for the Tokyo Olympics. But a couple of days ago, two athletes showed that one can still be friends and show sportsmanship even when competing against each other. The men's high jump final saw two gold medalists in Italy's Gianmarco Tamberi and Qatar's Mutaz Barshim. Tamberi and Barshim are two of the best high jumpers in the world who also happened to be very good friends. As fate would have it, they faced off in the final of the men's high jump event at the Olympic Stadium. Both high jumpers were able to clear 2.37 meters, but when the level was raised to 2.39 meters, both jumpers failed on their three attempts. And just when an official asked them if they wanted to do a jump off to try to determine the winner of the event, Bar Shim, the reigning gold medalist, asked an astonishing question. Can we have two golds? The official responded in the affirmative, and both jumpers were awarded gold medals in a heartwarming display of sportsmanship and class. There have been many memorable moments in these Olympics so far, but this is right at the top. An Olympic gold medal is indeed one of the greatest achievements in sports, but winning a gold medal and standing on top of the podium with a friend has given us a moment to remember from Tokyo. It's also something that Barshim and Timberi are not likely to forget. There have been many gold medal winners throughout Olympic history, but only a few can say that they won a gold medal with a friend at the highest level of competition. May the story of these two high jumpers serve as a reminder that no matter how competitive we may be in life or in our line of work, a little sportsmanship and love for others still goes a long way. And that's our athlete's feet. X3 basketball was one of the new sports that debuted at the Tokyo Olympics, and Italy was one of the teams that made it in its inaugural tournament. Their women's 3x3 basketball team, however, ended its campaign in the quarterfinals with a loss to China. But for one of their players, Raylan or Ray Ray Daly, just making it to Tokyo was already a tremendous achievement considering what she her teammates, and the entire country of Italy went through during the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. We talk about that and Dali on Women in Sports. Dali actually grew up in Wisconsin in the United States and played in the NCAA, but has actually represented Italy in 3x3 basketball for the past decade. The 33-year-old Dali was named as the MVP of the Olympic qualifying tournament that booked Italy's ticket to the Olympics, which included a dramatic clutch basket that gave them the victory and made their qualification official. But more than her accomplishments on the court, Dali is also a woman of faith. Living in Italy during the start of the 
COVID-19 pandemic made her a witness to the death brought about by the illness. During this time, she prayed to God and sang songs of praise as a way to strengthen her faith during this difficult time. It was also during this time when she wish that once the pandemic was over, she and other Italian athletes could give joy to the Italian people when they compete at the Olympics. And true enough, Dali and other Italian athletes were able to give joy and pride to the Italian people as they continue to represent their country in the Olympic Games. Dali may not have won a medal in Tokyo, but her fate sustained her through difficult times, and she is sure to celebrate each victory by Team Italy at the Games. And that is Raylin Ray Ray Dali, an incredible athlete and woman of faith here on Women in Sports. From women's basketball, we go to men's basketball. There's a lot of hoops action happening right now, actually. We have the quarterfinals in Olympic men's basketball, which already started, as you know, while free agency also began in the NBA. There's everything you need to know right here on Inbound. The start of the NBA free agency means wheeling and dealing by multiple teams as teams try to rebuild or retool by acquiring new players. There will be plenty more deals in the coming days, but two of the biggest include New Orleans Pelicans guard Lonzo Ball joining the Chicago Bulls and teaming up with all-star Zach Levine. According to multiple reports, Ball is set to join the Bulls via a sign-and-trade worth four years and $85 million. Ball will look to help Levine and the Bulls return to playoff contention. Another deal that is sure to send shockwaves across the league is the Miami Heat acquiring point guard Kyle Lowry from the Toronto Raptors. I'm personally hurt. That's my team. Reports say that Lowry will join the Heat again via sign and trade on a three-year deal worth $90 million. Lowry is a six-time All-Star who won a championship with the Raptors back in 2019. But if your team didn't land any new names, just remember that this is just day one. No matter how crazy it is, this is just day one of the NBA free agency. And there are still plenty more deals and signing that will be made in the coming days. You know, it's true when they say that there is never an offseason in the NBA. Never. There's just so much happening all the time. But while the NBA free agency gets underway, a lot of NBA players are actually still over in Tokyo playing for their respective countries in the men's basketball Olympic tournament. The quarterfinals actually began today with Slovenia and the United States both advancing to the semifinals. In the day's first quarter match or first quarter final match, Slovenia's, or Slovenia dominated Germany 94 to 70, which gives them a spot in the semifinals for the first time in Olympic history. Zoran Dragic and all scorers for Slovenia with 27 points, he led them while Lucas or while Dallas Mavericks star Luka Doncic finished with an all star, an all around effort of 20 points, 11 rebounds, and 8 assists. Meanwhile, in the second quarter final game of the day, it was was a battle of powerhouses in Olympic basketball between the United States and Spain, but it was the Americans who kept their gold medal hopes alive with a 95-81 victory. Kevin Durant of the Brooklyn Nets led the Stars and Stripes with 29 points, but it was Spain's uh, Ricky Rubio who actually led all scorers, finishing with 38 points in a losing effort for Spain. The other semifinal spots will be decided when Italy battles France in one quarterfinal game, while Australia and Argentina meet in the quarterfinal match of the day, which will be the last one on the schedule. And that's all we have now on basketball right here on Inbound. Going back for our final touches, it is day 11 of the Tokyo Olympic Games, and yet there are still Filipino athletes competing in their respective sports and showcasing their talents. Even though Nasty Patesho ended up with a silver medal, it was still a historic one for Filipinas and for boxers. With four Olympic medals, this is already 
the most successful delegation that we have sent at the games. And they still have a few more days to add to their medal haul. And it is very possible. We couldn't be prouder of our athletes there in Tokyo. Now for more sports stories here and abroad that not just inform, but also inspire, catch Plus Sports every day on Plus Network. That's it for us here. I'm Patricia Bermudez-Hizan. Thanks for watching.